Hi everybody, Fu here, and welcome back to Knowledge is Ever Power and our very general guide to each hero for each race, and I haven't forgotten about that hug. Um, I have, Fu. I, I think all of our viewers have as well. So, here we are with these Zerg they heroes. <laughs> no, they've forgotten, they've forgotten. Just, shh, shh. Uh, here we are with the Zerg heroes. I will start us off with Lings. Now, Lings used to be my favorite hero because, uh, you're, you're pretty much, in a pub, you're pretty much guaranteed to win. Because, here's the thing, they are the strongest backdoor heroes if no one does anything about them. Uh, they, if you look at the stats, they have 10 DPS, but that is one Ling hero. So if you have two Ling heroes, that's 20 DPS. You throw in the spawn Lings, you get 16 of those. You can do a ridiculous amount of damage very, very fast. Now, the problem with Lings is that they're very squishy, so you don't really want to lane with them because they won't do that well. You want to critter with them. In fact, they take priority over every other hero in the game for crittering because they are simply so good at it. So you would use them, you'd go spawn lings and speed, and then you just run around and try to get as many critter locations as possible. On river, you could get all six just by sending half your lings to the other side. On forest, you could get four, etc. So they're very, they are the best crittering hero. And once you've gotten a substantial lead, you have two options. You can either run out and gank people, and that will be effective for fair uh, for a decent while, or you can get the best weapon upgrades you can, go back door, and end the game. Um, the major weakness of Lings is that they are squishy, and that ta area of effect just completely destroys them. The strength is that if left unattended or unhurt by the AoEs, they do a ton of damage. So, moving on. Next, we have the Roach hero, the hero that doesn't give a shit. Roach is a very, 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 very tanky hero with his insane regen. It's probably one of its biggest strengths. It also does a great deal of damage to a single target. With this hero, I like to go a level or two of corrosive acid with regen and speed. It's very easy to just want to go straight regen and something else. But I will say that you don't need the regen as much early game. It can help. But what you do need is speed. Speed is very essential, and the Corrosive Acid is a pretty good poke. It's basically an extra attack with a damage uh, multiplier on top of that. I will say this for almost every Zerg hero, and Roach is one that applies to this. First 300 minerals, minus, and Broodlings. Get that really quickly. It'll help you get a lot of ganks. You have 100 energy only, but who cares? You have a Nidus. Yeah. Roach's strengths, I would say, is its speed. It's really getting at single targets got really good region and tankiness weaknesses it's just no aoe it's kind of easy to just kind of ignore stun it and it will die eventually so you just can't do quite as much mm -hmm. so moving on to hydra hydra is um is it's a glass cannon pretty much i mean it has 250 health and an armor so it's basically the zerg vulture in a sense it has very good DPS, not quite as good as Marine, but its major advantages are that once it's fully upgraded, it's very, very fast, it does a lot of damage to a single target, and its multiple spines give it creep clear. Uh, early game, I would say, do what Fu does, get the Nidus and the Broodlings, that, that, like you said, pretty much any hero. But as far as specific builds, since you have a Nidus, I would go Poison Spine. If you're not going to get a Nidus, don't bother, because it's very expensive and you don't have the energy. But I would go Poison Spine, and then either uh, Grooved Spines or Muscular Augments, which are your range and speed, respectively, depending on what hero you're against. You're probably going to need the speed against most heroes, because uh, you can be hurt very, very easily. Uh, basically, the strengths of Hydra are its high DPS and its creep clearing ability and the speed and the weaknesses are that it's very, very easy to gank and kill. It just doesn't have that much strength to it. Uh, next we have Drone, which Drone will cover. Yes, next we have Drone. Drone um, also used to be one of my favorite heroes. It's still pretty good. Um, the, the thing you got to remember with Drone... Spine form bad. Spine form very bad early game. Uh, always go swarm. I, swarm first. I see you. I see you personally. Yes, I'm talking to you. Exactly you and only you. One person who is watching this video. If I see you go spine form first and a pop, I will hit you on the nose with this newspaper. Yeah. So help me, I will. Yeah. And no hug. No hugs for you. 
Uh, actually, that's probably going to encourage them to go spine first. But um, always go swarm first because swarm is a an amazing AOE. It will wipe pretty much any ground. It doesn't matter if you're against Toss, Terran, or Zerg. You will just destroy things. Always try to go to a mid if there is one on the map because you'll get lots of farm there. And then I would say um, in certain situations it's best to go spine second if you're with, say, a Defiler or people who can cover you. But if you're in a solo lane or you're with just uh, just not a very uh, good composition. You should just go uh, drone metabolism to keep up your speed, and ba or against the hero like Phoenix yeah, or someone with something stuns. that can carry you or that can stun you. So basically, you would want to do that, and then your whole focus is on farm, and then you can still kill people in drone form, but uh, obviously you want to be careful about that. Uh, so the strength of drone are its great farming ability, especially once you get broodlords. As soon as you get broodlords, you want to move it onto the creep camps and just start farming right away. Broodlords are very, very good. Um, and then the other strength is that in drone form it's very fast and it's pretty good caster. Now the weakness is that if you want to do real combat fighting then you're going to have to go into spine and then you're pretty immobile. And if, you go into sp if, if you're against an air hero it can hurt you a lot because it can just play the flying game uh, even if you got spore. So, next we have next we have infester infester is one of my favorites probably my favorite zerg hero and i like to play it in a little bit of a different way i like to go neural parasite free uh, this isn't exactly the try hard build normally a try hard build would probably fungal and neural parasite build up a big army maybe with some ursas every once in a while you might fungal a hero to try and get a surround or just get a kill off on them. But here's what I like to do. Personally, I like to go fungal infested Terrans with broodlings and go ganking. Huzzah. Well, in fact, with broodlings and infested Terrans, if done perfectly, you can get a full surround. Also, using Fissure and your burrow to go around, you are actually a surprisingly effective ganking hero. If you have broodlings and razor swarm and all of your spells throughout into one, you've got one of the higher burst damages in the game. Plus, you're kind of like a, a Zerg DT in a lot of ways. But if you are doing full tryhard, I would suggest an old Parasite, but late game, you might want to wane away from that because it's going to be much less effective, and it's also a giant target on your head. Strengths to Infestor, I'd say, is Neural Parasite, first and foremost, for early game, but burst damage is surprisingly good. It's got really good creep clear, high energy pool, but weaknesses is pretty easy to kill. Yeah. So next, Fu will also be doing the Brutalist Kiro. And in between drinks, I will be doing the Brutalist Kiro, another one of my favorite. Brutalist is a really, really strong ganking hero, despite having only a 2.5 base move speed, like most gankers have a lot faster. But like any Zerg hero, guess what you're going to do? Type in the comments, you get Brutalings and Anitus. Spam it with Pounce Rampage, just go straight Pounce Rampage, and you should be able to beat almost any other hero in your lane. Not only beat them, but kill them a few times if done right. Rampage is very, very good burst damage, and Pounce is very great root. You probably want to get Broodlings off first, then get your Pounce on them, just because they'll probably get a decent ways away if you Pounce them, they might get in your spines or spores or something. And then you want to try and get Broodlings again so you can catch up. Use Rampage right when they break for your Pounce so you can keep up with them. Also, late game, you're very tanky. You will have Roar, which is one of the best creep clears in the game which has an insanely long cooldown and you are a very effective backdoor with pounce for mobility and getting up and down the high ground and rampage for an insane amount of burst dps yeah so next we have weaknesses i would probably say it's not very fast and it's melee that's the only kind of weaknesses for it mm-hmm so next we have the Mutalisk. Mutalisk is the most annoying hero in the game. Um, it has move speed of 3. Its its base stats are it's very squishy. The DPS isn't great. But uh, the two abilities that are really going to be your save... Well, three, I should say. Scream. Scream is really annoying because you push heroes away from you. It does a good bit of damage, and it's very, very long-ranged. So, especially versus mind control armies, that's going to be coming handy. Uh, you have Summon Mutalisk, which gives you a huge increase to your DPS, and you have Echolocation, which basically allows you to see everything. Now, uh, there's two ways to play Mutalisk. You could either go lane, in which case you're probably going to want to use Scream. Now, Fu will complain if I don't say this. Scream is not to be used if you're not going to kill or aggro the creep. 
What I mean by this is don't just use it as soon as you see the creep. Either wait till the creep's engaged with yours, or just don't use it. Because otherwise it will... Yeah, what happens is you scream the creep, they're, it messes up their pathing, they no longer have that nice little shift attack move command, so they will run off to some random spot straight to your base and likely die where no one's going to collect yeah, the Yeah, so d just don't do that. And you'll go scream, gl uh, scream whatever you want besides that, and if you... <laughs> and I just brutal <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. And then if you're crittering it, you'll go summon mutilisks and uh, glaive worm. You can really stop using glit. You can really uh, go summon mutilisks, scream, just don't use the scream on the critters. The summon mutilisks will be enough to kill everything. And uh, the major strengths are that it's very, very hard to kill, especially since you can see everything. And it does uh, very, it's just very, very annoying overall. But the weaknesses are that in any direct engagement, it will lose. Uh, because it's just not that strong. It's not very tanky. It doesn't do much damage. So you want to stay on the outskirts. You get two waves of mutas into one. Uh, with the cooldown, yeah. um, the mutalisk is 30, and they live for 50. So if you do it right, you can get both sets of muta up at once. And also, a nice little fact, it's just like Broodlore, you can stack your mutas up, and that makes it very, very difficult to be targeted by any sort of stun or... Uh, any sort of debuff or targeted spell or anything mm -hmm. like that. And next we have Ultralisk, the 1A hero. We'll just do a very quick guide to this. Step 1, pick Zerg. Step 2, pick Ultra. Step 3, locate the A button on your keyboard. Step 4, and here's the important part. Hit. Left click somewhere on the map. No, right click. A lot of noobs right click. Just Pooh, you forgot the most important part. After you've located the A button, you have to hit it first. God damn it! But but seriously, Ultra is about that. Yeah, that's basically what you do. It's very very tanky. It clears creep like nothing else, as long as you don't really care about the air. But you don't, cause you're Ultra. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ultra is also a very good crittering hero. If no one else is crittering, just go Spl uh, splash and speed and just kill all of the critters pretty quickly. I don't know the exact levels behind it, cause I've never done it. Um, you know, I would say. I go ultra crittering a fair bit. I would go just... Uh, you mean the exact level where you start killing them? Uh, basically, once you get splash level 2, or if someone built gave you a Nidus, you can actually really start doing it at splash level 1 and just take the hits. Um, and I'd also suggest doing two levels of speed and a level of charge, simply because after I critter, you go off and you creep block. Uh, that means you just go to their side and you go into the double lane and you just sit there and you kill all the creep. This is... <laughs> yep, that's a style of Ultralisk that Static has affectionately named the Trollisk. Yes. If you're laning with Ultra, it depends on the hero that you're up against. Normally, you just want to go Splash Speed, maybe a level of Charge, and once again, <laughs> Nidus and Broodlings. Even though Ultra only has 100 energy, you can still use Broodlings, and it's very good to stop those pesky heroes from poking you and maybe even get a few shots in. And I've actually managed to kill a few squishy heroes that weren't terrible just by using Broodlings yeah. and Charge. 